We've got a big day today. I got my buddy Harvey, who I've known for probably a decade now. He is the guy that actually helped me put this car together when I first started building it back in 2008 or so. But Harvey's become a great friend of mine. He is a long, long time Honda guy. One thing he does really well is he makes his own electric power steering system. And what makes it really cool is it has, I think three or four positions on a electric switch that allows you to add assist or take away assist. So you can go from basically a manual rack to no, with no assist to a full power steering uh, rack with a lot of assist. And I think that will come in really handy for this as a car that I want to be driving around town and also be able to take to the track. So I'll be able to dial it in or out however I like. So we've gone ahead and switched over to the manual rack as you guys know. As you can see here, there is no more uh, power steering mechanism which would have looked like this here. Power steering lines for the hydraulic fluid are all there and it has a big area for the fluid to pump through and assist the mechanism where this one is just straight old school, no assist. Since we moved this down, our steering column no longer reaches the uh, shaft here. As you can see, it's up there inside the firewall about four inches back because we did move this pretty far. So we're gonna go ahead and have to extend that today when we add the electric power steering assist module, which is gonna go in line on our stock steering column. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Harvey should be here any minute. A few minutes later. All right guys, well Harvey arrived. This is my boy Harvey Janice. What's up guys? Check him out on Instagram at Dune Addict. You're gonna wanna go follow him because he does some really cool shit. Like I mentioned earlier, former Honda guy, still in the Hondas. Absolutely. But he's also a wagon guy, which is really cool. Um, I didn't know that we had that in common until recently, but uh, I'm also a wagon lover and a hatchback lover. So Harvey brought along, I guess, the parts that we need to make this car have electric power steering. Yeah. So we've got the coil power steering module here. Um, this is something that uh, when you order a kit from Harvey, you get all these parts with the kit. What we have is a steering shaft, and what's cool about this steering shaft, in my case, is that it actually has adjustment. Because we moved the steering rack down in this project, we need this extra length. Um, so this is actually perfect. Then we have a steering column sleeve. This is gonna go over the, the existing steering column in the Honda, and then we will use this to bolt up. It'll adapt it to the unit. To the unit like this. The piece that I'm really excited about is the power steering control module that, that he includes with the kit and that you wire in because this little knob right here, as I mentioned earlier, you can adjust the amount of assist that the power steering rack is gonna give you with that. You just don't get that with a hydraulic power steering system. So that's what makes this really unique. For one, it gets rid of all the hydraulics in the car. So no more hydraulic lines, no more mess, no more leaking fluid, overheating power steering. Um, for you track guys, drift guys, and road race guys, this kit gives you the ability to turn the assist up or down based on track conditions or track locations. So I know a lot of guys with hydraulic steering have to just adapt to the car when they're driving, where this lets you adapt the steering to your driving style. What's really gonna be cool is actually trying it out. So unfortunately, the car doesn't have a shred of wiring in it at the moment, so there's gonna be no testing this today. So one of the other really cool things about this and Harvey's kit is that this connector, if you're not a wiring guy or you just hate the, the sight of having to do wiring, this actually plugs in. Harvey, you want to show us how that works? Yes, this is really simple. This just plugs in right there. You color match gray and yellow and gray and yellow. You put those to the control knob and then you have switch 12 volts and ground. That powers the unit. Then you have one more wire harness that plugs in here. You ground this side, this side goes to the battery. Done, that's all the wiring you need to know. Man, even I can do this. So what we're doing here is removing the snap ring on the steering column so we can remove the column. We've taken an initial measurement already, uh, came up with our measurement. We just need to make sure we have that final measurement once the unit's installed. In layman's terms, we're gonna chop a bunch out, we're gonna put that thing in, but we need to make sure it retains the same length. So right now, Harvey uh, just bolted the, the face of the the factory mounting provision, which is the dash beam or dash bar, however you call it. And then also gonna test fit sort of where the 
electric motor is going to be placed. All right, so it looks like we're going to have to remove this box, which we normally don't do, but it can be done. It's four wires that you cut and extend on the back here, and you have to make a little cover plate. Uh, we'll show you guys that in a bit. A little later. All right, so after a few test fits, we're realizing that this unit is probably too large for the area that it needs to go in. That's what she said. On these Civics, which is really weird because it fits awesome in a Miata, according to Harvey. There are some options, so we're not going to abort mission yet. We seem to uh, alter our strategy a little bit. What are we going to do? We're going to make some room. We're going to remove the computer control off ah, of the unit, okay. which will clear up all this area for us. We'll snip these four wires and just extend them, and then we'll we'll mount this off to the side. So we'll snip these. All right, so as you guys saw, I just chopped down the, the collar that uh, Harvey brought that bolts on to the power steering rack. And we've also chopped down the other end, which is our factory steering column. This is out of the EK. That is out of the donor part for the slide over the rack. So now, this slides over and we've got our custom length and then our power module actually just bolt directly to this tri pattern, which is pretty cool. So a quick update, we've shortened down the original steering column, we've also shortened down the original steering shaft. We have shortened down the new shaft that is going to be connected to the old shaft. Also you guys saw us shorten up the collar that is going to be mated to our original steering column and make this all one unit. We are now at the point where we can weld it together. This is now going to become one unit where you're able to marry these together. So I think we've got a good test fit here. I've been back and forth to the cutter and grinder. Harvey's been doing all the test fitting inside the car. I've been bolting that stupid bash bar that's getting thrown in the trash in and out to keep grinding it down so we can get this motor sitting where we want it and the alignment how we want it. Now that we've gone through all that trouble of in and out, in and out, cutting, grinding, we can actually start welding. So uh, here we go. So what we did is uh, we welded the shaft here, made it all one piece, and then welded the steering column to the unit steering column. So it's now, it's all one unit. So this will bolt in as though it was made for this car. Yeah, buddy. Ooh. Okay, test fit was a success. And I'm glad I cleaned off those, uh, you wanna to point to where we cut those ears off? Yeah, right here. So there was mounting ears on the side of this that hung down towards your feet and it really was worthless on this setup for us because we're not using it for anything. So cleaning those off really helped and uh, really helps tuck the unit up under the dash really far. Now that we know that this fits in with a factory dash bar, which is obviously trimmed down, uh, we're gonna be running just a, one bar across here and we'll make a provision to mount this on uh, at a later time. But knowing that it fits the stock dash bar is, is a plus for, for me and also for Harvey for future, but now, it's time to plug the motor on. All right, so as Harvey and I prepare the lower shaft that's gonna hook up to our manual steering rack, I went ahead and reached on the shelf and I've been dying to unbox this steering wheel since I got it. I have a friend over at Gretty and as you guys know, I really want to run this car in the VTech Club events, which is a series of events held uh, in Southern California for Honda guys. And they launched a limited production steering wheel called the Gretti um, VTech Club, I guess, limited edition collaboration. They made 50 of these steering wheels and I was able to score one. So I've been dying to open this. It's got the Gretti colors stitched on the uh, Alcantara part of the wheel. 
and has the VTech Club logo. I got my lucky number, 12. And of course we have the Gretti logo on here as well. Really nice wheel. Comes with a cool um, VTech Club horn that says for competition use only and some cool decals which will I'm sure find their way onto my car somewhere. But now it's time to hook up this old hub. Some of you guys might remember a drift car that was blue and teal, Falcon colors back in the day. It was a front wheel drive Honda Civic. This is actually the steering wheel hub off of that car. So yeah, I have quite a history with that car and I was lucky enough to get the steering wheel and the hub off of it before it was sent off to pasture. So I'm gonna go ahead and repurpose that in this car. It means a lot to me. Again, to get to that. <laughs> so I gotta find something this size? Yep. All right, well, we've run into a little problem. We've gotta do some sleeving to get the, uh, the lower shaft uh, to reach our steering column. So we've got a couple different bits that we need to slide into one another, and we need to make some clearancing. So we need to spin one of these parts uh, in the lathe, get it spun down so that it'll slide in and we can weld it. The boys over at Team Boosted, who are in our old shop, ironically enough, actually have a lathe and they're gonna go ahead and actually turn it down for us which is awesome um they bailed us out on a number of occasions and this is probably like time number three or four i think you guys have bailed <laughs> me out so cool that they have this giant ass lathe mill lathe lathe in here and a bridge port which is awesome if you guys don't already follow team boosted on youtube you should go do that now because they've got some super cool projects in here including this little Porsche that I love. This has a one rotor engine in it. Um, they've got a Mustang. What year is this Mustang? 69. 69 Mustang that's getting a bonkers engine set up, but you guys will have to go follow uh, their channel to find out what they're putting in that car. They also have a Corvette that's getting a big turbo. 60, 76 millimeter? Yeah, 76. 76 spinner over here. China boy. That little Johnny going in there. So, give Team Boosted a shout, follow them, turn on those notifications so that when they update these projects, you get a chance to watch. We made an alignment pin so that we, when we weld this together, it'll stay straight. We don't want the U-joints to wobble at all. This is the back half U-joint. And then we ended up retaining this. Actually, because this is gonna be a street car, not like an off-road vehicle, we're retaining the plunge. So if the vehicle's ever in an accident, you won't get stabbed by the steering column. This will compress. Yeah, that's It'll awesome. I'm all about that because I am gonna be street driving the car. So any bit of safety that we can put in it, it's good by me. Okay guys, so I just tacked this into place. And then we're gonna have Eric come in and take it all up so it's nice and strong. All fancy like. All right. all right guys, well as you can see, we got a steering wheel in the car. We have a completed steering rack. We do have a giant hole in the floor. Well, not a giant hole, it's the factory hole for the steering rack to go through. Um, we will address that with probably some sort of rubber boot or something at a later date. But for all intents and purposes, this thing is mounted and it works and it's awesome. We we don't have power to it yet, obviously, because there's no wiring in this car, but just the feel of it 
is really nice. We had a little bit of uh, issue because the, the joint for the steering rack is normally up inside the chassis, but when we moved the rack down, it moved a lot of things down as well. The joint is where the steering shaft and the U-joint meet the firewall. So we had to clearance like less than a quarter inch so that uh, as it sweeps around, it doesn't rub. Um, so you can see there where it comes through. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, so I guess we owe Harvey a giant thank you for coming down uh, today. And again, if you guys are interested in this modification, this can be done on any car for the most part. Um, this is pretty much, you buy the kit from him, so it's all the bits and pieces you need that I showed you guys previously in the video. And it shows up to your door in a box, and essentially, you figure out how to engineer it into the car, which we just showed you in how many hours? Six hours or less? Yeah, for the first time, that's not bad. For the first time, we just knocked it out, and it's pretty awesome. I can't wait to put power to it and actually play with the control box and all that, which we will be installing at a later date because we don't have power in the car currently. So that's going to end the uh, segment of the steering. We now can put the car on the ground and actually steer it for the first time since it drove in here and got put on the lift, which yeah. is a huge accomplishment. Um, but now it's time to move on getting these motor mounts done.